Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Brandon Fulton and Jessica Briggs Sullivan from Charles Schwab. Great. Fantastic. Hello, hello, hello. I look a lot meaner in that picture than real life. Uh, thanks for coming today. So we're gonna to talk today about building the Tableau Empire at Charles Schwab real quick. Shout out to all of my people that are watching from the Charles Schwab offices around the world. Okay, just in a few different states, but hello, Charles Schwab. How's it going? <laughs> so I am Jessica Briggs Sullivan. That's Jessica with a G. I'm infamous, at least to a few people. <laughs> So I am the BI, one of the, one of the BICO leaders at Charles Schwab. I've been working there for a couple of years. I am the newly announced Ventana Research Award, for, Award winner for analytics. You guys want to check out some of the work I've done there? Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's a huge, that was probably a career highlight for me, as, as is speaking here at the conference today. Um, I'm a mom of two, Starlight and Oliver, if you guys are watching. Uh, my daughter works in IT at AAA, so hello to you guys out watching there too. My job at Schwab is to inspire and help people use Tableau. So that's what I'm gonna talk to you about today. Um, again, Jessica with a G, that's also my Twitter handle. Most of you can get a hold of me easier on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, if you haven't heard of that application, check it out, I highly recommend it. And now I'd like to introduce Brandon. Thanks, Jessica. Hi everyone, I'm Brandon Fulton. My name is very long, so most people just call me B. I work at the, in the Contact Center Experience Group at Charles Schwab. I consider myself an aggressive learner, which means I like to pick a subject and focus on it for about six months. Uh, for some reason, Tableau stuck around a little bit longer than that. I've been using it since version 8.2. Back to you, Jessica. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, B. So today, we're gonna to talk about building our empire. Not the Empire State Building, but the empire of Tableau, or business intelligence at Schwab. We're gonna talk about the Tableau COE. We're gonna talk a little bit about dashboard usability, back with B, and then we're gonna talk about pulling it all together into our empire. So, funny story. When Brandon and I decided that we were gonna to speak together at the conference, we were kind of trying to come up with themes around our presentation. So I sent a nice email off to George Lucas Films, and basically what this email is saying without you guys having to read everything is no, you cannot use Star Wars in your presentation. So we will not be using any Star Wars material in our presentation today. Uh, out of shape Vader is, is also not included in that. No more references. No more references. So. Creating Jedis in the Tableau Center of Excellence. That's Tableau Jedis for you out there. Not, not Star Wars Jedis, Tableau Jedis. When we say COE, when we say the Tableau COE, when I say the business intelligence COE, it is not just about making people competent or having a center or, or a website available for, for people. It's really about a community of people that are coming together to help each other learn and grow. That's what we've done at Charles Schwab. That's what we do at Charles Schwab. We involve everybody. By the way, I have gloves on today. Hopefully it's not too distracting, you guys. It's freezing in this building. I have some <laughs> turn the air conditioning off, so if you guys see me trembling, it's not because I'm scared, it's because I'm really cold. Uh, Tableau Software Support Team, they are here out in the crowd today. They are our, one of our number one support teams. They help my users, they help me. We meet with them weekly. They, they're helping me grow my empire. Our Tableau admin team. So we have other Tableau people on my support team. Vina and Tasia, if you guys are watching out there, you guys rock. Um, my Tug leadership team. So I don't do this alone. I, there's no way I could have grown as quickly or, or we could have grown as quickly at Schwab with Tableau if I didn't have a team of people around with me, so my Tug leadership team. And the other Schwab leaders, the people that say, yeah, Jessica, go for it, go do this. Those are the people that are included in our, our Tableau COE. And again, we help people excel together by helping others succeed. My goal is not to make Jessica the best Tableauer in the world. 
It's to make these users the best tableauists in the world. It's to make my company make more money and to understand our profitability and to understand um, our, our intelligence, right? It's, it's what Renee Kim talked about yesterday in the, in the, uh, the, the keynote. keynote. So with Adam, right? Exactly. These are all important things that we do at Schwab. So where we've been, I'm not gonna go all through all these numbers with you guys, but if you guys watched my presentation from last year, we grew a lot and we grew very quickly. Everybody wanted Tableau, so how did we do it? One of the important aspects out here today, we had 643 number, uh, users for a Tableau desktop. A year ago we were at 400, so we've grown 60% just in the last year for desktop users. Uh, subscriptions, that's another huge highlight on our growth. We, since we went to Tableau 10.5, you can now subscribe other people. That's huge, now those people are starting to click in and start using Tableau every day. Renee mentioned the other morning, 45% of our users at, or people, our customers, our employees at Schwab are using Tableau Server daily, daily. And I think somewhere close to 80, between 80 and 90 are using every month. That's big, those are big numbers. So how do we do it? So we provide desktop server and training support. Desktop, I'm saying that right, yeah. Desktop and server training support. Um, we provide POCs, we provide, we listen to our users, we talk about enhancements. We provide shorter wait times and better processes. So a lot of what I did when I first came to Schwab was um, look at where what are people complaining about? Where are people having the most troubles? Um, what do we need to better train our people on? We prioritize those things. It's, ba you know, it's basic, it's Six Sigma, but you don't have to overcomplicate that either. If you don't have time to do a six month project to fix your COE, then just start with the basics and go from there. What do you need to fix now and how can you get it done quickly? Better and faster platforms and upgrades. We're doing POCs every single month or every single quarter, we're looking at something new. We run the Alteryx um, application as well at Schwab, our BI team. We also run business objects. So we're always looking at where can we, where can we go next? What's coming new that's in Tableau that our users want to use now? And how do we get that in quickly? And we're always thinking about next steps, next steps and where we can make improvements. So improve, it's all about improvements. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't even have to fill the whole pie. It just needs to be something basic and, and constant growth and movement towards the future. So how we do it, uh, moving into the future always be, says to Tabloda. Again, not Star Wars, very much not Star Wars. So, and oh, by the way, I'd like to thank some of the internet kids out in the universe for creating these pictures today. So how we do it, we plan well, right? We are always planning in advance. And, and if you start doing upgrades on a regular basis, those upgrades become normalized. They become very standard processes that can be repeatable. So they become easier and easier. Get those lessons learned and, and make those fixes next time. Those things have got to be part of your, your daily uses. This is basic IT 101, when I talk, or ITSM or ITIL. If you guys know anything about providing services to your users, then you should know that planning is part of it. Include everyone. I can't say that enough. When we do upgrades, I know in the past, we would, we would just take our power users or we would take the people that had the most important dashboards. But really, all the work that we're doing in Tableau is important. Every single one of my users is important. So we include everyone. When we do an upgrade, we do a POC, we invite everybody to the party. We don't exclude everyone. We don't say that, hey, nobody's looking at your dashboard or that was built with Excel, so we're not gonna do it. You're included too. And that's where we also get our champions. So um, those are the people that we find for, for our next upgrades or the people that are gonna help us the most, most in the future. And then we use our friends at Tableau as a resource. Guess what? Jessica doesn't have to learn every single new feature in the newest version of Tableau that's coming up. I'll, I'll learn things as I go, but I rely on Tableau to, to share their expertise. And I bring them to the party too. And always be moving to the future. We currently run an upgrade or POC every quarter. I mentioned that before. 
but that's important to us. We want our users to feel like we care about them enough to give them the best. So we want them to, we want them to have those things that you know, they announced this morning at the developers on stage. We want them to see you know, the Tableau prep, new features that are coming out. Those are, those are things that they rely on us to give them and they don't have to ask for much, right? When we come away from these conferences, I usually get people going, hey, when can we get this new feature that was shown this week? Or, Hyper, when is Hyper coming, Jessica? This was last year and we got it in within three months. So that's, that's what we try to get done. So our prep POC. So here's an example for you guys of a POC that we ran this year. Um, we invited everybody from all of our Tableau desktop users, all of our Alterx users. We invited anybody we thought that might be interested in using prep or learning about this tool. And we had over 100 people that raised their hand to participate. So that was about a quarter of our users in total. And again, that was huge. So what did we do? We planned, again, I'm repeating some of these things, but we planned and we did this with Tableau. We, we talked to Tableau every single week, but at the end of every single year, we talk, about, talk to them about what upgrades we wanna do, um, what features are coming in-house, and we get them to, to, to plan support of those things. So we, we create a portal. So we use standard, uh, standard template in SharePoint right now. There's some new tools that have come in house uh, over the last year, Confluence and Jira. Those are some tools that we might be looking at in the future for some of these upgrades or POCs. But we provide a portal so that people can get to the information quickly. So again, we don't want people, I don't want Sasha on my, on my user team to have to go out to Google to find out where the training video is. It's all in one place, it's all easy to get to. And we invite the end users, again, I can't say this enough, invite everybody, invite the end users, invite those people that are gonna wanna, gonna wanna use this. And as new people come in, we invite them too. And we get their cases, their use cases, and, and we make sure that everything's available that they'll need inside of Tableau Server or inside of their own desktops. What are those drivers that people need? If I know that 90% of my users use Teradata, that's a basic, but what if somebody's using something that I'm not thinking about? Weekly BI meetings. So we basically have developers from Tableau. Um, sometimes it's just Kelly and our, in our immediate team, but sometimes we include the developers of these products. So the Tableau Prep developers, they came on these meetings with us and helped train my users. And in those meetings, they also got feedback from my users on what we need in this tool to better use this at Schwab. And we're seeing those features get added to their roadmaps. So as they're, as they're planning out new features, they're thinking about, hey, Schwab says they really need this integrated or they need this data source or, or they need to be able to do this kind of calculation quickly and easily. So that's what they include in there. Um, so we're cer cur currently working on certification of prep. As we, as we learned about Tableau prep conductor. Hey Jessica, when are we gonna have Tableau prep conductor in? <laughs> So Brandon, we're gonna actually talk about that <laughs> when we get back to Schwab next week. So I actually sent a note to some of my admin team and, and that's something that we need to start planning for now. So as we, when we come to these conferences, we're biting off things that we can use at Schwab next year. So, and those are things that my developers also, when I say developers, my desktop users, those are things that those people are planning for too. So how do we do it? Partner with Tableau. Again, my partnership with Tableau is huge. So Sue, Kelly, Pavel, and Russ, we meet with these people every single week. And I'm going to tell you, if you guys don't have a team like this that is engaged in meeting with you guys weekly, talk to Kelly, talk to Sue, and see how you guys can get the same kind of service set up at your company. This has been implemented. This has been highly influential in our growth at, at Schwab. We haven't had to tell people no because we have an amazing support team that helps us say yes. So some of the things we partner with, with them is new use cases, right? So when people come to my door and say, hey Jessica, can Tableau do this? 
I'll, I'll get a call together with some of the Tableau resources and we'll figure out what's the best way for these people to get this done. And if it's something that Tableau doesn't do, which most of the time I can't say that's possible, then Tableau takes that back to their engineer team and says, hey, we need this in Tableau. We need this in Tableau server for this team to utilize this. Uh, Tableau user groups, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that, but we have an amazing Tableau user group at Charles Schwab. My thought was, why do I have to have my users go off to a monthly meeting in the middle of Phoenix so that they can learn about the new features in Tableau or they can learn how to analyze a dashboard or build a worksheet? We have those in-house, we have those in the workday and they're pre-planned months in advance so that, we can, so that we can provide those meetings to our end users. And most of the time our users come back to us and they say, this is the best meeting that I have all month. This is my favorite. Upgrades, we plan all of our upgrades with, with our Tableau team. Um, any issues, so Pavel, when we meet with Pavel every week, we talk to him about any issues that have come in, we talk to him about our growth, we talk to him about you know, things that are worrisome. Hey, we had a CPU issue last month and we kinda wanna talk about that. So Pavel's there, he helps us with our logs, he look, looks through for you know, things that we need to improve on. He's there for us. I've had users that have called in on a Friday at 5 p.m. with an issue with a dashboard that they need built and in place that night, and Pavel's answered the call and gotten on to meetings with us so that we can help those users through that. A new user monthly webinars. So every month, all of our new desktop users, when I say we've had 60% growth, we have new users every single week. So every single month, we have at least probably about 20 people on this call. But we have a new user webinar. We show people how to use Tableau Desktop. We show them the basics. How do you connect to your data sources? How do you publish into Tableau Server? How do you find resources? How do you, and we'll talk about our jump word Tableau, but where do you find the training videos so that you can learn Tableau? We show them all of that. So Kelly and I run that meeting every single month. And then growth planning, right? So those are, those are things that are always happening. Um, and we use Pavel and Russ for that. And we have meetings with them every single quarter to talk about where, what's our growth? What do we need to work on? Do we need to put more capacity in our servers? And then new features. One of my favorite, th favorite things that we did last year, we actually had the na natural language team. So Andrew and his team came out, out to Denver, Colorado. And we went through the new natural language program with them. And we got feedback from our users. And we talked about, hey, what do we need to improve this? Or what do you guys need to better learn this? Or what do you guys need to use this at Schwab? So that was a really cool that, thing that we had. And we, we constantly are thinking about how do we get users involved in this new feature. And Tableau Mobile will actually be bringing that into Schwab next month. So that's gonna be a, a cool new feature. And I know a lot of my leaders this week at the conference have talked about using Tableau Mobile. Data for our end user. I'm gonna get a drink really fast because I'm gonna, I'm gonna dry out. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so data for our end users. I know you guys know that there are Tableau admins available for, or Tableau admin dashboards of <laughs> admins. There are admin dashboards available for you guys online that you guys can drop down and put your Postgres data sources into and then publish. So we've taken those and we've improved them and we've made them available to our end users. Part of that new user webinar that I spoke about before, we show people how to find this information. That way they can find the growth or the usage on their data or their, or their new dashboards. I had one user that said, Jessica, I'm not sure if anybody's using this. I'm sending questionnaires out and it turned out she didn't have permission on her dashboards. She hadn't given nobody access to a dashboard. So, and we figured out that by giving her access to one of our dashboards here on our Tableau admin page. We let our users manage their own business. They don't have to reach out to my team every single time they have a question. They have an extract failure, they can go straight out to their Tableau admin dashboards and, and see the error message or see the error code. And then they can start troubleshooting on their own. We really wanna make people as self-sufficient as possible when using our environment. And again, you can find these for free online. If you guys need to help, help finding that, let your Tableau person know. Jumpboard Tableau. So just a real quick story. Before I started at Schwab, I attended a Denver Tableau user group meeting 
and I was exposed to JumpWord Tableau, and JumpWord is something that we use internal to Schwab. It's um, an easy way to search on our internal Schweb. Uh, so this thing is, was so cool that I went back to my previous company and I said, we need this. It's something that you absolutely need to have a center of excellence like ours. It's a centralized place where you can get all the information for everything you'd ever want to know about Tableau. Very cool. Yeah, so it's, it's infamous, if I do say so myself. But, um, and here's the front page. This is basically the overview page. This is where you can go and you can get your announcements. You can find out um, more about Tableau. Um, you can get to the rest of the pages in Jumpboard Tableau. So product information. People don't need to come to me so that I can tell them everything that Tableau Desktop does and everything that Tableau Server does. We provide links back to tableau.com and people can watch those opening videos there. That's huge, right? I don't ha they don't have to ask Jessica for everything about Tableau. It's right there. Again, we're talking self-service. Our training and maintenance calendar. So our training tab is it's a great place for people to go to. People can subscribe to this page and they can find out about Tableau Doctor sessions. So one of the things that Kelly and I provide every single week is a Tableau Doctor session. So they actually get, my users can sign up and meet with a Tableau Doctor every single week to work on their dashboards. Or if they wanna change the color, or if they wanna do an LOD, that, that's where they can get that support app. If they're getting an error message when they try to load a big data set into Tableau Desktop, they can get support on those things right on the fly. Our Tableau new user webinars are hosted here as well, along with our Tableau user groups, and, and any other kind of training that we'll, we'll have along the road. And we also have our maintenance calendar out here. Not too much going on here, but we have a subscription page, so if some, we're taking Tableau server down for a night, you can find that information out here. Or if something's going on and we have a major issue during the day, maybe it's a network issue, maybe it's Tableau's impacted, we'll put that information out there for people. Resources tab, so resources and support tab are my favorite things in the whole world. So the resources tab is really where you guys can get anything that you need to see and visualize your data or see and understand your data. So we have our TPS files here, we have desktop service requests here, we have our server, user, our server requests here. We have new folder, project folder requests here. If you need a new admin group or a new um, Active Directory group added in, you can put a request here and we'll, we'll get those things fulfilled for you. We have performance checklist. We also get updates from our end users. So if an end user has built something for his team, um, a tool or is it a presentation, we'll put that out there too. So I know March Home, he created an advanced Tableau developer's guide for usage at, at Charles Schwab. So that's out there too. I go back to, Jessica doesn't have to do everything. If you send me something that should go on this resources tab, I'm gonna put it out there and make it available for the rest of my users. Our support tab. So this is basically where people can ask questions and get support from other Tableau desktop users around Charles Schwab. We do get a lot of questions that come over to, jump, or to the Tableau COE team but most of the time I'm sending them back to this page. Hey, if you're looking for help with an LOD calculation, if you're looking for help on how to, to put a better frame around your picture, if you're looking for help on using a template, you can go here and ask your questions. And a last couple of tabs, uh, My Tableau and Tableau User Groups. So My Tableau is really where you can go to get back to those Tableau developer um, the admin pages, the views where the, the, ter the Tableau data sources are at or our Postgres data is at. So you can find out where your pro my projects, how, you, how many workbooks that you have out there, and when was the last time people dialed into those or, or touched them. That's all in, all of that information is right there. And then you can also find how many developers are across Schwab. This picture is not up to date. Again, we have 643 users this morning, so we've grown a little bit since I updated it last Friday. But we are growing constantly. But managers can use this dashboard to find how many developers are on their team. They can break down, go down to the cost center level, or people can find out who's using Tableau in my neck of the woods. Is there somebody in Denver I can go and ask a question to? And they can find that information here. And then our Tableau user group page. This is where we record and we keep our Tableau user group recordings. 
So we update this every single time we have a meeting. We've had a couple of issues in a couple of meetings where those meetings didn't get recorded, but most of the time that information is out there. If somebody wants to know more about LODs, they can go to the presentation where that's shown. So opportunities. So extract times. Um, we, our extract times are you know, sometimes doubling over, over and boiling on top of each other. Again, we're not perfect. Um, we're always working with our users on those things, but how do we make that more standard? How do we teach people how to pub publish up their data or their workbook and make it go as fast and easily as possible? And we're still working with teams on improvements for dashboard load times. We want their dashboards to be fast, and I know Brandon's gonna talk a minute in a minute about usability, and those load times mean a big difference for your end users. So people that are touching your dashboards, if they have to wait 20 seconds for that dashboard to load, then that could make the difference between them going into that dashboard every day or not. It's not working. Oh, there we go, okay. So governance, 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 governance. I know all of you out there are probably thinking, how do we better govern our data? Um, we are working on that with Schwab too. We put a lot of funding and resources into um, governance of data sources for next year. And that's not to say that we're gonna put 100% of that control in Tableau Server. Guess what, we'll probably don't, won't do much more than making sure people understand what the rules around governance are so that they can put those in, in part of their dashboards or in part of the work, their daily work strategies. But we're working on that next year. It's not perfect yet, we'll get there. Next bullet, this thing is not working. Okay, so on TBI, we're looking again, better dashboard improvements. Certified data sources, that came out in Tableau 10.5. We are working on that now. Um, and we have our, actually a Sammy, I think he's out in the audience somewhere. Hello, Sammy. He's a head of the Global Data Technology BI team, and he's looking at how do we do these certified data sources? What are our rules around maintaining those? And he'll be working with our end users on that next year. Project leader training. So Kelly and I, our goal to get done by the end of this year is to put project leader training in place. So that means when you get a new project set up, when you say, hey, I'm Sam, and I'm in charge of this group, and I want to publish dashboards at Tableau Server, you have to have a Tableau project in place. Um, our server environment, we do not have the Wild West where anybody can publish in and, and delete or, or add data sources. You have to have a project that you can publish to, and that project must have a leader. So we're gonna have training for those people so they, better, they have a better understanding of how to provide access. Um, what are the rules around keeping data sources in Tableau Server? Or what are the rules around publishing into it so that they can better provide that information back to their end users that are using their project? And automation, 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 automation. So we're always thinking about where can we automate? What can we do better there? Next slide. Dashboard usability. So now that we've learned about how the Tableau Schwab COE runs, we're gonna talk about our amazing Tableau community and how to better build dashboards. B, you're up. Thanks, Jessica. I don't think it's working anymore, sorry. <laughs> you're on your own. Do next slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna give you a scenario. Imagine you're a dashboard developer. Maybe you're a tall dashboard developer. Maybe you're a handsome dashboard developer. Maybe a developer with a beard like a young Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ah, very good. <laughs> so you're a dashboard developer and you've just finished the most amazing dashboard for your best customer, Jessica. This dashboard's amazing, truly terrific. It's got everything. It's got Viz and tooltips. It's got a fully optimized hyper extract SQL query. It's got um, all the right parameters in all the right places. You spent tons and tons of time working on this thing and it's finally ready for the grand unveiling. So you sit down with Jessica, your customer, and you say, you know, I need you to, or I'm sorry, you're driving. So you're driving through the dashboard, you're showing her how it works, you're clicking around, and she says, oh, but what if I wanna see this metric over here? You say, oh, well, you know, you just click right there. And then she says, can I do next slide? 
And then she says, oh, well, how do I get that to change to year over year? And you say, oh, well, you know, you click over here. And then she says, well, but what if I want, why, I mean, why is this mark over here? What if I want this mark over there? And you say, oh, well, that's, that's just kind of where it's going to sit. And then she asks to drive. And she inadvertently clicks the relative date filter, changing five days' worth of data into five years' worth of data. And you both sit and watch as it loads. Next slide. So you leave feeling defeated. You've got a list of action items, a ton of stuff to do. So why did this happen? Doesn't Jessica understand how amazing this dashboard was? Doesn't she get it? This was, it met all of the requirements. Every requirement she gave you, you were right on the money. So I don't know about you. Maybe there's some folks out here that feel the same way. Let's go to the next slide. So I'm Brandon, and as I, said, as I said before, I work in the Contact Center Experience Group at Charles Schwab. I've been using Tableau for about five years. I go next. So my journey to be on stage with you today began in an industrial design school where I learned things like, oh, by the way, industrial designers make great Tableau dashboard developers. So next time you're hiring, keep those developers in mind. So I learned things like human factors and user-centered design. Now, I can already hear you out there, yeah, 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 we get it, B. Everybody knows that dashboards need to be user-centric, right? But saying isn't the same thing, saying it isn't the same thing as living it. It wasn't until I got to work with actual usability researchers at Charles Schwab until I understood this fully. Next. So fast forward two years, I'm working at Charles Schwab in a usability organization. There's our campus in Lone Tree, if you've ever been there. Um, this totally ties into what Renee was saying yesterday morning at the keynote about design thinking, and we're always trying to look through our clients' eyes, and that also means internally. So uh, my manager, Jeff, had just got done uh, building a usability lab in Lone Tree, and it was really cool to be exposed to this usability testing, something I had never really seen before, and they used fancy words like prominence and mental models and Hick's law, cognitive bias, and heuristics. Next. So here's our lab. There's my favorite customer, Jessica, sitting in the lab. Uh, our lab's got one-way glass. It's got audio and video recording. It also has mouse tracking software, which is pretty cool. So as I said before, I got to watch Jeff improve our products at Schwab, put the, put the products in the lab, get feedback, change the products, and make a real difference. So I had an amazing idea. What if we put Tableau dashboards in the lab? I know it's crazy, but hear me out. So I called upon our amazing Schwab Center of Excellence and our Tableau user group looking for volunteers. Lucky for me, there were some folks willing to participate. So where do we start? We figured best practices would be a great start, place to start because we all say, oh yeah, we need to use best practices. So we did some A-B testing and we used a counterbalance question order to eliminate participant learning bias. And that means that we mixed up the question order so people didn't learn something from one question and apply it to the next question and it would come through in the results. So it was cool. We had folks like Danny, Brian, and Kaylin, and Chris re recruit participants from our cafe in Schwab. And we had our resident usability expert, Brendan, teach us the ways of usability testing, asking the right questions, being brave, and allowing for super awkward silences. So here's some of the best practices we tested up on screen here. Some of the more notable ones are contact, context and instructions on a dashboard drop-down filters for dates versus sliding filters for dates, and also highlighting keywords in a paragraph. What did we learn? We learned that best practices work, right? <laughs> what was actually very cool about this is being able to quantify it and then take it back to the Tableau user group and say, this is why the best practices work and this is why you need to do these. So let's take a look at this example. What if I asked you, what is the first year where the GDP for Europe is above average? Anybody? So I'm willing, do you know? So I'm willing to bet, well, you're not allowed to bet. Oh, you can get bet, sorry. Uh, so on the right is our, is our B sample, and obviously 2006, I think. Yeah, you can see it from here. So yeah, 2006 is the right answer. It's much easier to see in the step color versus the gradient because the I is easy, it is easier, or it's difficult for the human eye to differentiate between hues. 
So, I mean, it was a pretty big difference. We had everybody that took the A on the left, they were all incorrect, and everybody looking at the right one, they were all correct, so it was, it was very interesting. We also had some very unexpected findings. So, action filters are fantastic. In fact, we found it was 36 seconds faster for folks to use action filters versus drop-down filters. But when we asked them to unfilter, they ran into trouble. It actually broke most of our users' mental models when we asked them to undo an action filter. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're, when you're developing your dashboards. So now we had a pretty good understanding of dashboard usability, and it was time to move to the big leagues. And that's right, I'm talking about production dashboards. So we got together with our COE and Tableau user group again and asked for some volunteers. So here's the steps on screen that we took for this phase two. We had folks like Kaylin and Danny coordinate and gather requirements from our users. Uh, we interviewed the developers, we got the user stories, then we scheduled participants in the lab. Then we, we had folks like Tyrus and Eric who had never done usability testing before jump in there and start doing these assessments with no experience and it was very, very interesting to watch them learn how to do this and it's, it can be a little nerve wracking. So very, very good on their part. Now I don't have enough time to review all of the findings with you, but let's take a look at some examples. What if I were to tell you that there was something important on this dashboard? It's been blurred to protect the innocent, but what, what, would, what would you think there? Let me help out just a little bit. So there it is. So it seems super obvious now. If it's important, you need to draw your user's eye to it. In this case, it blends in with all of the beautiful schwa blue up there. So if you need your user to see it, make it pop, bring it out. So this is going to be a little awkward. What is that? You guys know what that is? Everybody knows what that is in this room, right? It's our favorite loading wheel. So that was a 10 second pause. And I know that there's some dashboards out there that take much, much longer to load. Let's look at the math. Wait time for one of our dashboards we tested was 10 seconds on average. And this dashboard is viewed 6,000 times per week at Schwab. And we noticed our participants were clicking at least twice, sometimes more. If you do, I mean, that ends up being 33 hours per week of waiting time. That's basically a full-time employee. I can get another resource for that. <laughs> exactly. So, that, I mean, that's full-time employee, basically a full-time employee. Now, I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. I've said, oh, well, you're, it's gonna, you're gonna have to wait for it to load. But really, really, really think about that loading time and how much waste that is. So, Tableau came out with Hyper Extracts, which is fantastic, and it's helped out a ton. But when you're connecting to a live SQL database, it does not help as much. So you have to be cognizant about those load times and work with your data teams to get the data in a format that's usable for your users. Load time is so important, in fact, one of my friends at Schwab was dissuaded from using Tableau altogether. He said, load times are too long, we can't use this tool. It's so, so, so important to be cognizant of those load times. All right, I'll get off the soapbox now, Jessica. So I'm going to give you just a sample of some of the other findings we came up with, they may not apply to your organization, but we found them pretty interesting and we're trying to spread the word. So let's take a look at this first one. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Be careful with dark backgrounds. Dark backgrounds are sexy, they're cool, they're fun, but when you click a mark, the label fades into the background and becomes un unreadable, basically unreadable. So just be careful with them. I'm not saying don't use them, just be careful. Are you saying they should stay on the light side? They should, yes, okay. stay away from Thank the dark you. side. Thank you, Brandon. So, consistent layout and format. So if a user goes to a dashboard that they've never been to before, but they, it feels and it looks similar to something they've seen, they're going to have a much easier time using the product. So take a look at these amazing teams that are doing terrible right now. Uh, this this uh, web page right here, even if you've never been to another team in another league, everything's in the same spot. So you know where to look for the data you're, you're trying to get at. Those numbers look really low there, Brandon. Yeah, we'll, we'll skip that one. All right, so let's take a look. Oh, this one's broken too. There we go. So put the most important things at the top of the page. There have been so many, there have been, um, I've, sorry. 
It's important to find out what is most important to your user. Now, you may think that you know what's most important to your user, and your user may think they know what's most important. But we found through usability testing, a lot of the times the most important piece of information was below the fold, meaning you had to scroll down to get to that information. So through usability testing, we found out what was more impo most important and said, put that at the top, make it easier for your users. So just to reiterate, recap real quick, be careful with those dark backgrounds, use a consistent layout and format, and also put the most important stuff at the top. Pretty easy. Very easy. All right, to close out, I'm gonna give you some of the tips, a couple tips to apply the usability of testing techniques in your dashboard development process. Now, I have an access to a really awesome fancy lab with all the equipment, but you may not. So these tips should help you with your development process. So first is let Jessica drive. I've seen it too many times where the developer is driving through the usability or through the, the demonstration. Like, of course you know how to use it. You develop the thing. Put your user in the seat. Let them drive around. You're gonna get so much better information from them and find out where those pitfalls are and be able to help and correct that. And plus, Jessica's gonna learn how to use your dashboard. So next, make sure you're asking questions, open-ended questions during the assessment and you'll get better feedback. There's a couple examples up on screen here. I'll, let's look at the first one real quick. Like if Jessica said, I don't know what to do. You can say, you don't know what to do. Super open-ended and you're gonna get tons of feedback back because they're gonna try to fill in, you know, they're, they're gonna wanna try to answer that question. Nobody likes awkward silences. So there's a couple other techniques, the boomerang and the Columbo. I'm not gonna go through them, but check out the video afterwards or you know, Google them, check them out. They're, they're also very, very powerful. So the last and most important thing that I've learned through this whole process is that user acceptance, user acceptance testing is not the same as usability testing. So you, you want to, you don't wanna give your, your participant or your, your customer a script and say, click here, click here, click here, click here. You wanna be super, super open-ended and say, you know, what would you do if you just got to work? Or how do you find out how your team's doing? And, don't wait until you're done with the product to get it in front of them. Be super iterative, be agile. Agile. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're gonna get so much better feedback and the end product will reflect that. And in the end, your customer Jessica will be delighted. This is so. the best dashboard ever. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Let's bring it together, Jessica. So now that we've talked about usability, we've talked about our COE, how do we bring all of our community together? So Tableau user groups, and now I'm gonna to talk to you about our Tableau user group a little bit more. So our Schwab leaders. So one of the first things I did a couple years ago, we, we came to the Tableau conference and I had dinner with a few of my team members or a, part, a few of my Tableau desktop users who've now become my team members. And I said, Jared and Jason and Brandon, I was thinking about starting a user group at Schwab. Right, so that you guys don't have to go at 6 p.m. on a Thursday night out to the middle of the city to talk about Tableau. And they said, hey, we're on board, we're gonna do this with you. So again, I sent an email to everybody, all of my Tableau desktop users, and I said, hey, I'm gonna start this user group up. Do you guys wanna be involved? So I had a few more volunteers come on board. So again, thank you, Jeffrey, Jared, Chris, William, and Jason and Brandon, thank you guys. So a few of you guys are online there, a few of you guys are out in the audience, so thank you guys. And we have monthly recorded meetings. Every single month, the same, basically the third Thursday of every month, we have a recorded session. Absolutely. Brandon, do you wanna to talk to them sure. about how we run those meetings? Yep, so the schedule usually starts about, we usually start the meeting about five minutes late to give everybody enough time to get in there, get from their uh, previous meetings. Then we go through our Viz contest, which we'll actually touch on a little bit in a moment. Then we have a real world segment where we take actual production dashboards from Schwab and we show them and we have the developers speak to why and what they did. And it gives a, a great opportunity to see what everybody's doing around the firm. Then we do a real world, or I'm sorry, then we do a training segment where we have someone from Tableau come in or we have a consultant come in or maybe one of us will lead a training. Session. Or if one of you wants to come in and speak, yeah, hey, come exactly. on board. Exactly, so I mean in the usability, in the usability study we found that people had really tr a lot of trouble with data-driven alerts. So we had Candy from Schwab come, or from Tableau actually come in last week to speak to us. And then we'll give away some prizes at the end either through the survey or we'll do it live on the call, randomized. 
And then if there's any updates, upcoming POCs, anything with conductor, you know, then the, the, the leaders will speak about <laughs> that, that at hint? the end. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and at the end, we send out a survey. We send an email to all of the people. So we are, in average, we have about 100 to 120 participants in our Tableau user groups every single month. That's huge. So what we want to do in those surveys is find out what you guys want to learn next. What should we get a speaker on next? What do we want to learn about next? Hey, do you want to come and volunteer some of your time to be part of the user group, or do you want to come speak? So Kaylin, who's out in the audience here today, she spoke in our latest user group, and Sasha the month before, and, and we have a, a user that comes in every month. So these people are volunteering via these surveys. Um, and then, we, again, we provide cool swag. So these Tableau bottles, we give those out every month. We give T-shirts out. We give keychains. We give all kinds of Tableau fun out. And biz contests. So part of what we also do, we want people to train and learn. We also want people to have fun. So we want people to have fun with Tableau. So we have this contest every other month. Let's take a look at some winners. So Jason Pooler, he was uh, one of our last winners. He's actually our Iron Viz winner too. So this is one of the fun dashboards he built. Sure. So we let people take that time. March Holm, he's, uh, he may be watching online. Hello, March, if you're out there. He's one of our ta Tableau Iron Viz champions as well. He's an amazing artist with Tableau and he participates in that. And then we have our Iron Viz. So? So we do an Iron Viz, and our Iron Viz is much, much better than the one you'll see later today. Much better. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really cool. We, we put together a data set. We, sometimes we build data sets or combine. We go out to the internet and find data sets. We get about three to four participants. We give them the data set a week before, and then they start with a blank dashboard. And we, you know, we stream it. Over, we stream it to all of the locations. Everybody can watch and see what, what they're working on. Switch between the views, and it's so exciting to see everyone running around the building after one of these high fives. And it's it's truly unbelievable the response that we got. And these are our most popular meetings for sure. Yeah, I often get emails after the fact, um, managers that are taking these off to their leadership meetings and showing people, hey, here's what my team is participating in. Yeah. How do we do this with our other applications? How do we make using our application fun. That's where it's at. Um, here's oh, here, one of our... Yep, and there's the winner from our first Iron Viz. That was our first. <laughs> we, had, we actually had it at, on December. You know, a lot of people are on vacation, but we had an Iron Viz with, with Santa data. Perfect. So how can you do it to it? If you're a Tableau admin, reach out to some of your business users and reach out to your Tableau support team and start planning. If you're a Tableau developer, reach out to your Tableau admin and, your, and, and they'll reach out to your Tableau support team and start planning. You don't have to do it alone. Um, how to create a Tableau COE. Start small. Again, don't bite off more than you can chew. Make some goals and then just start attacking one at a time. You don't have to change the world in a day. Just deliver what you can at the moment. Find your champions. Again, those are the people that are part of my user group. Those are my champions. Those are my people I rely on. They help other customers. They help everybody succeed. Reuse the wheel. I don't create Tableau videos. I don't have time to. I use the stuff that, that is out in the world. I, use, I found a Viz cookbook online in, the, in uh, Tableau, Jumpboard ta or Tableau.com, and I use that in our websites. I don't recreate things. Make it fun. It has to be fun for your end users for them to use these tools. And in number seven, or number number seven, it's create, have fun for yourself too. It's fun for me to be part of this team. We're wearing tuxedo shirts around the building today. I mean, that can't be cooler than that. So that's part of our elite club. It is, our Tableau developers, they're special at Schwab. They get treated differently. They are the people that are empowered. They're the people with the data. Those are the people that people want to be part of. And remember where you began. I can't say this enough to you Tableau admins out there. Remember how you got started using Tableau. Remember the videos that you watched. Remember that tr the training that you got, the blogs that you guys read. Those are the things that are going to help your users succeed, well, succeed as well. Um, a big thank you real fast to all of our users out yeah. there, all of the people that were part of the assessment, all of our Tableau user group, and also my Alteryx user group leaders. Some of you guys are here, you guys rock. And now we're gonna have some time for some questions. Jared, Jason, and Will, do you guys wanna join us? Sue and Kelly? There's a couple of microphones back here if anybody has questions in the, in the aisles. 
Come on up. <laughs> All right, questions. I cannot see you, so. Nope. Here we go. Hi there. I'm Jesse from Comcast. And hey, Jesse. How do you decide who gets a license and when to use Alteryx versus uh, <laughs> when to just let people use Tableau? I can't say that um, because I, I started using Tableau with Excel, um, we make it as easy po as possible to get Tableau. It doesn't cost as much money as Alteryx to use. Alteryx, we put a little bit more due diligence, di due diligence around. So we actually have a meeting set up every time want, somebody wants an Alteryx license. We do have a smaller Alteryx user base. Um, if somebody needs to just munch some data together, we're trying to get people to start using prep as well. Thank you. Hi, how's it going? Christian Bautista from Dish Network. Uh, also in Lone Tree, Colorado. So right Very next good. to the Charles Schwab building. Nice. Uh, so in reference to the load times of dashboards, uh, what would you guys say have been some of the quick and easier wins um, in terms of speeding up the dashboards? I know you guys must have millions of rows. Um, and we're sort of coming across the same problem of load times, so we're using aggregation. Yep. And I was just more curious to how you guys um, were using uh, whatever it is to make your dashboards more efficient and faster in load times. Yep. No, that's, so I'm not, I, I won't say I'm an expert in loading times, and that's, that's something that maybe some of the more technical folks can answer, but I mean, it, it really is aggregation. If you don't have to drill down, don't put anything don't put anything there that doesn't need to be there essentially yeah. like cut that down as far as you can if it needs to be detailed if you can go if you can set your details to be like a week and then you have an aggregation to go back a full year something along those lines that's what i've had success with i don't know if you guys have any other yeah so that's a good question and a few other ways that we improve load times especially with our big data it was uh, 10 5 was a big win for us with hyper that really sped up a lot of our load times and Tableau Prep has really improved things where we can actually minimize and summarize data sets. Um, also with Alteryx, we can do that as well to where we can kind of reduce the amount of data that's going into our, our uh, hyper extract on the Tableau server, as well as um, kind of reducing that down and, and summarizing it. Good. All right, one best practice we always tell people, don't put more into your dashboard than you need. If you need only, 0.5 of a gig of, a, a gig of data, then just put that amount of data in there. If you need just three mo months on your dashboard, then just, just bring that in. And the other thing I would point out is, you know, we want to please everybody. So you're looking and thinking about what your end user has asked for, and you're saying, well, you know, in six months, they might want to do this kind of a filter. And you end up with these filter blobs of, you know, 20 filters at the top of your page. Think about what they're actually going to be using. Don't put something on there because you're speculating that two people might need this in <laughs> nine months and it's gonna slow down your dashboard by five seconds. So really think through what's the simplest way I can do this? How can I make this efficient and more usable for everybody? Because as we pointed out, if your dashboard takes a really long time to load, they're just not gonna use it at all. So keep it simple, keep it efficient. Very good, thank you. All right, okay. Hi, I'm Carolyn. I run the Tableau user group for my company, and uh, we don't have a center of excellence, so I have some questions about that. So sure. Myself and a couple of other Tableau developers get a lot of the questions from uh, everybody in the company, and it's just not sustainable for, to have a couple of people that's not their full-time job doing that. So how did you get the center of excellence started? Does it live, with, um, live within the IT department, and how many full-time users, uh, employees do you have doing that? Okay, so my team is a staff of four people, um, and we also manage all treks as well. So, we yeah, and we we can't do it all either, right? We can't answer all the questions. Um, my thought is, I am not a desk, desktop expert anymore. I used to just do dashboard building and workbook building and and data source munging, but I don't do that anymore. I'm running a server. I can help people with permissions on there. These guys, as part of their role on the Tableau user group leadership team, they have to be in that, that, um, the support tab. 
So when people ask questions and it has to do with server, I'm gonna pop in there and get that question answered. But half the time, if it's permissions or something basic, these guys are answering. So, and Chris out there and, and the rest of the guys on our team, they're answering those questions. And when we get questions that are about dashboard building or desktop usage that come to our COE, we send them back to the support tab. They have to get in the habit to, of using the, the people on our team. And these guys, when somebody says, hey, this, is there somebody that could spend a half hour, an hour? I'll go back to Kelly and Russ and I'll say, hey, do you guys have a half hour, an hour to spend with this guy who's building a new dashboard for his leadership team? And guess what? 99.9% .9 of the time they're gonna say yes, and if they don't have time, Jared, Jason, Brandon, Will, these guys do. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi there, uh, my name is Carl Kramer, also from Dish Network, I work with Christian. Um, my question is, how do you build user-specific views? Um, I, I guess we have different end users, right? So we, our dashboards typically are a catch-all for corporate and field managers, but our 500 plus field managers interact with the dashboard much differently than anyone at corporate. Um, and even though they run on the same data source. So I was curious how you go about building specific views or what you do to mitigate that for faster load times for each specific end user. I would really think about whether that really does belong as one dashboard. Just because it's going from the same data doesn't mean it needs to be in the same place. Um, I know my executives are not looking at the same kind of level of detail that my frontline managers are looking at. Uh, so not only what I think about building is separate visualization, I'd even think about does the data source itself need to change a little bit. Um, you know, with my executives, I want something that's really snappy. So I'm, while the lower level manager dashboards are going to be more high detail and might take a little bit longer to load because of so many rows, I'm gonna use aggregation a lot more on those high level executive dashboards, even though it's really coming from the same initial data. Uh, the other thing I can say is if you've got some sort of a portal that you're displaying this on, um, I know I embed all of my dashboards on websites. Uh, take advantage of things like the JavaScript API, the new extensions API. You can do some really cool things of swapping in and out of different visas without anyone ever really noticing that they're moving between different workbooks. Any other questions? I was going to add to that one for uh, Carl, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I have some dashboards that are very similar where we have one data source that's used by a large number of different users and groups. And so we actually have Active Directory integrated with the, the Tableau server. And so we're able to implement, implement row level security that, that Tableau has as a feature um, into that. So users can go to that dashboard and only view what they actually have access to within the Schwab system. And on top of that, um, you know, with Tableau, you can do uh, URL filtering and you can actually filter a dashboard within the URL, and so we'll actually send out user-specific URLs that are already filtered to a view that would be applicable to that individual or that business unit. So that's, that's another idea for, for managing that. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi there, uh, Matt. I Hi, Matt. I uh, would love to hear more about how your team manages user proliferation along with content management in a scalable way. So as you want to get more and more people using Tableau, that sort of increases the amount of people you have to oversee to make sure that the things that are going out are the, the, the Charles Schwab standard. So we, so we do provide some training up front. We provide some templates. We provide best practices. That is just definitely something that we have to mature on. It's not perfect. Um, we have teams, so ABI, Jared is part of ABI. Nobody else up here is part of ABI, but there's a lot of ABI people out there in the world. So um, our ABI team is very specific about what they want and the standards that they have in place. And they make everybody on their team follow. Some of the other teams are, are a little bit more lax. And I know, um, you know Jason and his team are very consolidated in what they do. But we don't, as far as our Tableau server team, we want, the, um, we want those teams to come back to us and say, hey, can you start training our users on this? And that's, what, that's where we come in. We need that information. But we don't, um, we don't necessarily drill that. We don't tell people, hey, you can't have a, an Excel chart in Tableau. Because it, it happens, right? Um, so we don't, we don't have those basics in place, but that's definitely something that we're willing to grow towards. Yeah, the enforcement's at a team level. So each Definitely. team has their own standards, 
and then so it takes and off, the project takes leaders of of inside of Tableau servers have to enforce those standards. Uh, just a quick follow up though with version control on that as well, just making sure that you know the dashboards themselves are functional. That's also just handled at a team level. Okay, thank you. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name's Scott. Uh, in terms of adoption and setting up your COE, uh -huh. uh, how did you overcome more of the kind of legacy mindsets that may have been prevalent within your company? Um, I can't say that we've overcome them all, but I feel like the enthusiasm and really the support, having this team in place, I mean, we are a partnership. Um, having that in place, our leaders, our leaders that have teams that are using Tableau are saying, this is where we're spending our money. This is where the investment's at. Um, but we do have teams that are, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna name out tools right now, but that are stuck on some of those older things. They like to, um, they like to have their data built for them, put in a, a certain place. And you know, in, in my mind, it might take eight to 10 weeks to get the dashboard a new filter put in, but that's, that's what they're used to. So we kind of play, we kind of juggle that, but the enthusiasm and the growth in Tableau, I mean, it's, it's kind of taken on a, a life of its own. And I'm so happy that we have um, you know, the support that we have in place. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to do it. So I'm not trying to, I always say, leave the, leave the haters, leave the haters behind, right? So if people are, they have something negative to say about Tableau, I'll listen to their feedback and I'll work with Tableau on that. But then I'm not, you know, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. I have, I have a million other things I have to work on. So that passion and enthusiasm that my users have in using this product, it's, it's, it's carried it forward. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Uma. I'm from Akamai Technologies. So we recently uh, ad adopted Tableau and we are going live, kind of touching on some of the performance as well as the standards, right? Uh, do you have any um, standards in terms of how, lo how long should the dashboard take to load for so let's say executive versus something which is more detailed? So our average um, load time for all of our dashboards is five seconds at Schwab. So that's, that's kind of the goal, right? If it's faster than five seconds, then you're doing something wrong. There needs to be some work on it. Um, we take a look on my team, the admin team. When we have time, we'll take a look at what those load, if we see something that's taking a minute and a half to load, there's a problem either with the data source, with the network, and we try to troubleshoot that um, when we have time. So, but yeah, our standard is, is basically five seconds. And I know there's teams out there that are like, if it's faster than, or if it goes slower than one second, then that's trouble. But it, that kind of goes down to the user filter. Do you guys have standards on your teams? No? No, but we check, we've got the dashboard available, the metadata, so we can see how long those load times are. And I think you, you guys alert when dashboards are loading too long. So. Yeah. Just one follow-up. So you let it go to production and then you check whether, what further well, you need to tune it. Yeah, we have tools that are available so that people can check that before they publish up. Um, and again, we, we do have a limit on the amount of gigs that people can publish up into Tableau server as well. So if my team sees somebody that's trying to, getting an error message to their data source is too large, then we'll, you know, we'll reach out to those people and try to, um, you know, try to give them some best practices on building dashboards. It's about training. We don't, we don't send them a nasty message saying, hey, your dashboard was built wrong, we're not letting it into our environment. We try to look at it as, a, as an opportunity for us to consult with them so that they can become a Tableau Ninja. And I would add to that by saying, you tend to see trends of different things that are, t that are making dashboards take longer, especially as new features are rolled out and people get really excited about something like Viz and Tooltips. Viz and Tooltips suddenly are everywhere. And now, uh, you know, you, you hover over and you're like, don't worry, just, w just wait 10 seconds. You're going to see some really cool stuff pop up. Uh, and that's where we also leverage the power of our user group. Um, so when we start seeing these coming up on a recurring basis, um, we're reaching out to more people or we're seeing more questions pop up in the support site, we're going to take that and come back to our folks at Tableau and say, hey, we're struggling with this topic. Can we get somebody from Tableau to come into one of our user group meetings and give us a, a detailed training on how to do this more efficiently? Yes. And that is a fantastic way to get your message out there to everybody all at once. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. If you have other questions, let me know. I know you guys are just starting up. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. Hello. Hi, Phil from Leg Mason. 
um, we're just starting up as well. And uh, one of the th when when new projects start out, how do they how do they get the access to the data? Like, does somebody actually create data sets for them, extracts, certified extracts? So we provide, um, people have to put in requests for projects. We provide security groups for each of our projects. We have a interactor security group, and those, I know those are changing with the 2018, 2019 versions that are coming out. But we have an interactor, we have an admin or a project leader, and then we have publisher roles in the, in the project. So, and then we have to teach those project leaders, hey, here's how you administrate your project, right? So it doesn't have to be my team to give those. Um, and those, pe those project leaders get to decide what levels of access they want their users to have. And how about the actual data underneath? Like, do you guys provide the data sets for them? Yeah, my... The, the data, they're actually um, gonna go out and do that on their own, either through, by doing it themselves as a developer, using something like Tableau Prep or Alteryx, or they're gonna have somebody on their team that they use. Um, as you can imagine, at Schwab, we've got a lot of data, um, everything from customer information to interaction information. So we've got a Teradata environment, an Oracle environment, Hadoop. And um, big data now. You know, it's, it's all over everywhere. Mm -hmm. And each one of those uh, different databases has its own access controls that are completely independent from us. So we rely on them to, um, to handle who can access the actual data. And then we rely on our developers to get that data out there. And I can't stray strongly enough, I know we're out of time, but um, the data security belongs in the data. So the databases, that has to be secured there. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what, what's in, what kind of security is in Tableau server. Anybody can get to anything. So that's where we rely on it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks everybody who's out there. We appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.